Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. I want to, uh, I want to welcome everybody here to City Hall today. Uh, before we begin, this is uh, always a wonderful event that we do here in the city of Brockton to recognize uh, the wonderful Lithuanian people that have done so much in the city of Champions. But I am going to ask you to take a moment of silence. I actually just came back from Russell Pika. On Monday, we lost a dedicated public servant, uh, Brockton Fire Department, Lieutenant Mike Mahoney, who passed away at the age of 52 suddenly. I've known Mike my whole life. So we just welcomed his body back to the City of Champions. So if we could just take a moment to uh, recognize Lieutenant Mahoney at this time. May he rest in peace. Our thoughts and praise to his family. Uh, so again, I'm, I'm Robert Sullivan. I'm mayor of the City of Brockton, and um, I'm just so honored to be here today. And, I want to just, if I could, take a moment to recognize the other elected officials that are here today. Of course, we have State Senator Mike Brady. Thank you for being here, Senator. <laughs> City Council President Jack Lally. Mr. President, thank you for being here. <laughs> Councilor Lodge Winthrop Farwell. Thank you, Councilor. <laughs> Councilor Lodge David Texera. Thank you, Councilor. <laughs> Ward 7 City Councilor Shirley Azak. Thank you, Councilor. Our district attorney from Plymouth County, Tim Cruz, thank you, DA, for being here. Tony Branch, who is the vice chair uh, of the Southeastern Regional Vocational Technical High School, who serves as one of the two representatives from the city of Brockton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for being here. And Ward 7 School Committee member, Tim Sullivan, thank you for being here, Tim. So we have a great agenda uh, before we actually uh, have the honor and privilege to hoist the flag here. Uh, we were hoping that the weather was going to permit to do it outside, but uh, we thought it would be best practice to keep it inside right now. So at this time, <laughs> I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Bizenkoskis to uh, please come up and uh, perform the invocation. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, Psalm 33. Eternal God, stir thou our minds and stimulate our hearts with a high sense of patriotism as we celebrate today Lithuania's Independence Day. Make us clean, keenly aware of our good fortune to live in a country which upholds the rule of law and recognizes our rights. May all that this day symbolizes for the people of Lithuania help us renew our faith in freedom our devotion to democracy, and redouble our efforts to keep a government of the people, by the people, and for the people truly alive in our world. Grant that we may highly resolve on this great day to dedicate ourselves anew to the task of ushering in an era when goodwill shall live in the hearts of all free people, justice shall be the light to guide their feet, and peace shall be the goal of humankind to the glory of thy holy name and the good of our nation, the nation of Lithuania, and of all mankind. Amen. Amen. Saint Casimir, pray for us. Our Lady of Shilova, pray for us. Aushrasvartu Maria, pray for us. Amen. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'm actually going to invite um, um, someone to come up to the stage to uh, do the national anthem. And I do want to also just take a moment to thank John Drazinskis and Cheryl Lee uh, for everything that they have done and continue to do in the city of Brockton, Cheryl Lee Hopwood as well. So I'm not sure what individual is, is going to be singing the national anthem. Please join us again. We'll just have you stay right here. Thank you. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. Ever
I also want to recognize uh, Councilor Lodge, Rita Mendez. Thank you, Councilor, for being here today. So at this time, uh, again, I just want to thank everybody. I want to welcome everybody. Uh, again, I want to thank John Drzezinskis, who really has been running uh, Yeoman's Hours, uh, coordinating. Uh, it's a team effort here. Um, when we conclude, I would encourage everybody, please uh, envelop yourself with the history of Lithuania here and the Council. Uh, I also want to give uh, best regards from Sister Ruth Dagonikis uh, over at uh, the convent on Thatcher Street, and also Sister Joan of Arc, who just turned 100, who shared with me her mom and dad came from Lithuania. <laughs> St Sister Joan said that her dad was a coal miner in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, and most of the people that were coal miners in his, his uh, department were from Lithuania. So just hardworking, dedicated people, uh, and a lot of them immigrated here to the City of Champions that really have done so much in Brockton. So at this time, I do want to thank the members of the Knights of Lithuania for taking the time to be here today and to keep the Lithuanian tradition alive and well in our city of champions. Um, right now, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to kind of shorten this a little bit because people don't want to hear me talk today, but Lithuania proclaimed its independence in 1918, and I'm here uh, to be honored to uh, celebrate 104 years of Lithuanian independence located in northeastern Europe. On the east coast of the Baltic Sea, Lithuania is the most southern of the Baltic republics, a trio of countries formed in 1918. Lithuanian people are the most resilient uh, people in world's history, uh, and that's according to my Lithuanian friends. My Irish friends say something different, and my Italian friends say something different. Uh, even after proclaiming its independence in 1918, Lithuania has uh, dealt with invasion from uh, Germany, 1941 to 1944 and the Soviet Union from 1945 through 1991. 1991, after two years of contention with the Soviet authorities, Lithuania declared its independence for the second time. The first significant wave of Lithuanian immigration to the United States of America began in late 1860s. And during that time, extreme famine caused many young male Lithuanians to immigrate to America, searching for money to bring back home to their family and their loved ones. However, rising tensions between uh, United States and Russia in World War II, uh, paired with the overall American acceptance, caused an even more giant wave of Luthi Lithuanian immigrants to come here to the shores and travel to the United States of America, and they would settle here and make their mark here in our, our wonderful de democratic nation. A portion of hundreds of thousands of Lithuanian immigrants brought their families, their hard work, their religion, their dedication, their culture, their tradition, their awesome baked goods, and I know that for a fact, and they located typically uh, here in the Montello section of the city of Brockton, uh, respectfully known as the village section of the city. The village had Lithuanian-owned bakeries and grocery stores and meat markets and pharmacies and furniture stores and a whole ho host of different businesses, cafes, candy stores, cobblers, barber shops, and et cetera. Lithuanians contribute to our local economy, and many of them were hardworking uh, Factory workers, uh, the Douglas Shoe, the Diamond Shoe, Field and Flint, to name just a few. Lithuanian community was still a faithful community. In 1900, St. Rocco's Church Parish was established on Webster Street here in Brockton. This church would eventually change its name to the beloved St. Casimir Church, where many, many generations of Brockton's Lithuanians would attend regular mass and practice their Catholicism. The parish was shut down in 2008 after the Archdiocese made some decisions. As mayor of the city of Brockton, I want to just thank you all for enhancing the culture of Lithuania, uh, for choosing to live here, to work here, never forget the history. We need to look at that history to forge ahead for our future. And without uh, further ado, as I said before, my, my, my wife and my mother say I talk too much. I'm going to cut it short right here. But I am going to say that one of my really proudest moments as mayor is to be able to give certain proclamations. Uh, it really is something special to do. Citations for people and proclamations to earmark special occurrences and events. <clears throat> so here we go. Whereas the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was dissolved and divided by Pr uh, Prussia and Austria, the majority of Lithuanians were placed under Russian rule. With the end of World War I and the fall of the Russian Empire, Lithuania declared its independence February 16th of 1918. Whereas during the 1940s, Lithuania was occupied by the Soviet Union, and later by Germany. By the end of the decade, Lithuania returned to Soviet occupation and lived under communism for more than 50 years. 
Whereas on March 11, 1990, Lithuania became the first Soviet Republic to declare its independence. Whereas the growth and prosperity of Brockton, Massachusetts is due in large part to the rich diversity, which includes hardworking, dedicated, faithful members of Lithuanian descent. Whereas the city of Brockton has been greatly enriched by the introduction of Lithuanian customs, foods, and culture, and it was brought here by Lithuanian immigrants who made, again, an indelible mark on our city of champions. Whereas our vibrant Lithuanian American community has made tremendous contributions to our city, to our commonwealth, and to our country. Now, therefore, I, Robert F. Sullivan, Mayor of the City of Brockton, do, do by proudly proclaim February 16, 2022, in the City of Brockton as Lithuanian Independence Day. And I urge all residents, all business owners, here in the city to please join me in observing this very special day. And I sign and seal it again the 16th day of February 2022. And I would like to present this at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mayor. I appreciate it. It's so kind of you. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to invite um, the, uh, the special guest to uh, share some comments at this time. Thank you. Oh, well, here I am again. <laughs> For those of you who don't know who I am, I am Marita Bizinkauskas. I am president of the Knights of Lithuania Council One. And the Knights of Lithuania is the oldest organization in the United States uh, celebrating this year. Well, it was established in 1913, so you do the, you do the math on your fingers. Right over 108, yes. 108 years now, 109 this summer for the Knights of Lithuania, and the first council was founded here in Brockton, Massachusetts. So, Mayor Sullivan covered many of the aspects in my, <clears throat> my little note here, so, but it will be a repetition, so you won't forget. <laughs> so thank you again, Mayor Sullivan, and honored guests, and fellow Brocktonians for being here. It is my great honor to be here in the beautiful City Hall to celebrate the Republic of Lithuania's 104th anniversary. On February 16, 1918, a group of patriots gathered in Kaunas after the collapse of the Russian Empire and declared its independence. They, however, did not return to their former way of ruling, as was established in 1236 by King Mindaugas, but they modeled themselves after the United States, forming a republic with a president and a governing body called the Seimas. This fledgling democracy worked diligently to bring the economy of Lithuania into the 20th century. And with the help of their patriotic countrymen who fled Tsarist occupation and came to the United States, they were soon on their way. With financial support from Lithuanian Catholic churches and civic organizations such as the Knights Lietuvosvice, their former name, the Knights of Lithuania, their country began exporting high quality pork and dairy products. Their currency called the litas was valued by people and Lithuania flourished within a decade. As we know, their freedom was short lived by the end of World War II. They came under Soviet sphere of influence and their autonomy was once again torn from the hands of the people. All the nations that were absorbed by the USSR suffered greatly under occupation. But the desire for liberty was still greater, and the people kept it alive, even as family members were sent to the gulag in Siberia to work in heavy slave labor camps, some never to return. The Lithuanians in the United States kept up, kept up hope for their countrymen and organizations like the Knights of Lithuania wrote letters to members of Congress, lobbied senators, marched in protest, danced in festivals, anything they could do to keep the name Lithuania alive in the minds of the free people of the West. In the late 1980s, a period of glasnost and perestroika was declared by Gorbachev, and a little more freedom was allowed. The brilliant patriots of the Lithuanian Communist Party asked and received permission from Moscow to be an independent communist party, not necessarily tied to Moscow. The permission was granted and the Lithuanian Communist Party declared themselves independent from the Soviet Communist Party in Moscow. 
then, on March 11th, 1990, declared the country of Lithuania independent from the Soviet Union. And Vitotas Landsbergas was chosen the first president of the restored republic. What a masterful move. <laughs> and an area, the era of the Lithuanian public was restored, but not without bloodshed. When the eyes of the world were focused on the beginning of the Gulf War, the furious Soviets sent tanks into Vilnius to surround the radio and television tower in order to squash this independence. When news went out, the residents of Vilnius formed a human chain around the tower, linking arms in singing Jame Lietovos Ajolai Jaluas. In the soul of Lithuania, mighty oaks will grow. The people thought the tanks would be restrained by the human shield, but the order to shoot, to kill was given, and 13 people perished there. The radio station in Kaunas sent messages out to the free world telling them what happened. Our Brockton native, Lucia Bashkauskos, was brave enough to stay in, the Kaunas, in Kaunas, reporting on the invasion to the free world. However, help from the outside was slow to arrive. No matter, the desire for freedom was greater than any adversity, and the Republic of Lithuania battled on. Today, Lithuania is respected on the world stage as a member of NATO, a member of the European Union, and is one of the few sites for the Worldwide Cybersecurity Center in the coming years. So today, we celebrated the 104th anniversary of the Republic of Lithuania with our flag-raising ceremony in Brockton. We can reflect on the contributions of Lithuanians here in our wonderful city, as the mayor mentioned. Brockton can boast, as Council One of the Knights of Lithuania, an organization that celebrates 109 years this summer. The Lithuanian village, the center of the community for a century, with the beautiful St. Casimir Church, the spiritual, in many ways, the cultural center for 110 years. Here in the village, we had Lithuanian bakery, Kilkus, with the brick oven, baked black bread on Arthur Street, the Bellevue Avenue bakery, with the delicious Tuesday bagels. Somalia's market, where you could buy most staples. Zinki's market, where you purchase the tastiest kielbasa and pickles from the barrel. The dress shop, the Mishkinis drugstore, uh, very important, not just for prescriptions, <clears throat> but it was the only place to purchase grain alcohol. <clears throat> so the ladies could make their homemade krupnikas, a honey spice liqueur, and other herbal medicines uh, to keep everybody healthy. Yes, the Sandra Club offered one of the few places outside of uh, north end of Boston where you could get delicious pizza or a homemade burger smothered in onions, which would melt in your mouth. It's heartwarming to know that generations of families still live here. Our grandparents and great-grandparents gave us love of our Lithuanian traditions and heritage, but taught us, more importantly, to love this wonderful country. In Tukis Playground, there stands a memorial honoring those Lithuanians of Brockton who died in service to their country. May we Americans cherish our freedom and not only allow any one person or government to take it from us. Valio Lietuva, Valio America. And also on this important day, I'd like to just introduce um, Estera Sonilaita, and she just wanted to give the greatest um, uh, welcome from the people of Boston. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Estera Sonilaita, uh, Boston Lithuanian Community President. And um, I brought the best wishes for this important day for uh, all of the Lithuanians who live here, who live before us, and who will live after us. I think it's a very important day for us. And uh, like Mirce and Marita, they said a lot of good things about Lithuania. I'm just saying again, Valoliatova, Lithuania, always be free. Thank you. Thank you. Greetings. Uh, thank you, Mayor Sullivan, uh, for receiving us today, and uh, congratulations on another term. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> uh, my name is Vitanis Sanuta, uh, Vice President of the Knights of Lithuania, Council One uh, of Brockton. Uh, I'm proud to say that I was born and raised in this city. Um, 
some of this is uh, rep repetitious. Um, Lithuania was one of the largest countries in Europe, stretching from the Baltic to the Black Sea. For the past few centuries, it's been busy defending itself uh, from occupying neighbors like Imperial Russia, Nazi Germany, and the Soviet Union. These neighbors tried to eliminate Lithuania's language, culture, and identity. Many Lithuanians fled to escape serfdom, conscription in the Russian army, persecution, Nazi concentration camps, and deportations to the Siberian gulags. And most of these fled to America, which was and is the beacon of freedom, hope, and opportunity. They arrived and settled in cities like Brockton. They became citizens and their society flourished. The Roman Catholic Church, school, and convent were built with hard-earned immigrant funds. Choirs and folk dance groups formed. The Lithuanian language school was established. A weekly Lithuanian radio program aired on old WBET. Businesses like food markets, pharmacies, restaurants, and bars with some of the best pizza in town opened. And it must be said, the community contributed by sending its young men off to wars. Since Lithuanians have been preoccupied in the national survival mode, <clears throat> they have generally tried to uh, uh, live a, uh, a simple, uh, simply live a life study hard, work, and raise a family while lobbying for freedom from afar. <clears throat> they shun the limelight. There aren't many famous Lithuanian Americans, but here are a few. Hall of Fame football players Dick Butkus and Johnny Unitas. Butkus defined the position of the middle linebacker, and Johnny Unitas, they say, invented the two-minute drill, uh, two uh, drill known as the drive. Uh, side note, I once met author Tom Clancy just after he published his book, Hunt for Red October. Uh, I asked him why he chose a Lithuanian to be uh, the rogue Soviet submarine commander. As a native Marylander, he said he knew Johnny Unitas was Lithuanian, so he figured he'd start the story with that in mind. Another one is Jack Sharkey, heavyweight boxing champion. Uh, he defeated Max Schmeling in Madison Square Garden in 1932 for the title. Uh, no, he never fought Rocky Marciano, who came later. <laughs> Others are actors Jason Sudeikis, Ruta Lee, and Ann Jillian, Oscar-winning director Robert Zemeckis of Back to the Future and Forrest Gump fame, uh, Ultimate Fighting Champion Rose Namayunas, and New York Times bestselling author Ruta Shepetis. Lithuania has a, large, uh, has a diverse population of its own. Uh, from its Muslim Tatar community, the actor Charles Bronson is perhaps the most famous. <clears throat> and Lithuania was home to a large Jewish population. Its capital, Vilnius, was known as the Jerusalem of the North. Its immigrants and offspring in America are known as Litvaks. Famous Litvaks are Victor David Brenner, sculptor and designer of the Lincoln Penny, Bob Dylan, the songwriter, uh, Harvey Milk, the politician, Yasha Heifetz, arguably the greatest violinist ever, uh, Al Jolson, the actor, singer, and comedian, uh, and my favorite, the Three Stooges. Uh, and there are many, many others. Uh, so in closing, um, America, with cities like Brockton, remain a desired destination for freedom and opportunity. Brockton has a proud history of being welcome to immigrants, even to this day. Its cultural diversity and tolerance are its strength. From this environment of acceptance and inclusion, come great dividends. Our small Lithuanian community is a mere example, uh, and we, we remain most grateful to the city of Brockton for providing a welcoming haven from the world's troubling elements. Thank you. At this time, I believe there's going to be a proclamation from the governor that will be read, and I want to thank John uh, and, 
It's my honor to have him come to the podium. We have tall mayors around here. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Mayor Sullivan, uh, for um, accommodating us here at City Hall. And I'd like to thank everyone, elected officials and others that came out and um, supported the Lithuanian and Independence Day today. It's a great turnout. It's more than I expected. And thank you all. So yeah. this is a Commonwealth from, um, this is a Commonwealth, okay. This is a uh, citation from the governor, governor of Massachusetts, Charlie Baker. Whereas, whereas in 1795, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was dissolved and divided by Russia, Prussia, and Austria. A majority of Lithuania was placed under Russian rule. With the end of World War I and the fall of the Russian Empire, Lithuania declared her independence on February 16, 1918. And whereas during the 1940s, Lithuania was occupied by the Soviet Union and later by Germany, by the end of the, end of the decade, Lithuania returned to Soviet occupation and lived under communism for more than 50 years. And whereas on March 11, 1990, Lithuania became the first, the first Soviet Republic to declare its independence. And whereas a vibrant, vibrant Lithuanian American community has made tremendous contributions to the Commonwealth's society and culture, now therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim February 16th, 2020, to be Lithuanian Independence Day and urge all the citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in, in its observance. Given at, the, given at the Executive Chamber in Boston this 10th day of February in the year 2022, and of the independence of the United States of America, the 245th, by His Excellency Charles Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth. Once again, I'd like to thank everyone for being here. And uh, please, at the end of the ceremony, at the end of the formal program, we have uh, some goodies, some refresh refreshments on the table right in back of Cheryl Lee. Please partake. <laughs> Before we, uh, we, we proudly hoist the flag, I also want to recognize Council Maria Tavares. Thank you, Council, for being here. So at this time, I'm going to ask all the Council members um, that are here today they would like to join us as we proudly put the flag up within the halls of City Hall, the People's Building. <laughs> Thank you. 